Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections in STAD Pro using RAM connection. In this video, we will be focusing on designing our beam column flange connections to resist the shear reactions. Now, before we get started, let's take a look at the database that is available in RAM Connection. It is important to understand what types of reactions and what types of sections are supported by each connection template that's supplied with the program. In this video, we're going to be focusing on our beam to column flange connections that can resist shear reactions, and a graphic of these types of connections can be seen on your screen. We will now turn our attention back to our sample model. This sample model contains several beam to column flange joints, and all of the beam column flange joints must resist a shear reaction through its connection design. We're going to start our workflow by selecting all of the beam column flange joints in our model. We can do this automatically in the STAD Pro RAM connection mode by using the Select Joints tool and then telling the program we want to select all beam column flange joints. The program will use your geometry along with the beta angles assigned to each column to identify the beam column flange joints. Once your joints are selected, you are now ready to assign a connection template to them. For this model, we're going to be using a basic connection template to assign a shear connection to the selected joints. To start that process, we'll go to the Connection Design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the Basic Connection icon. Once in the Basic Connection dialog, we're going to select a connection type. To start, we're going to go with a clip angle beam column flange connection. Now these are basic double angle connections. In the available window, we're going to see all of the connection templates that are available in the RAM connection design mode through the database. In the available window, you're going to select all of the connection templates that you want to use as candidates for the currently selected joints. For my particular model, I'm going to select all of the double angle beam column flange connections that have three quarter inch diameter bolts. To select multiple connections, you can simply hold down your control key. Once you've selected all the connection templates you want to be considered for the next process, you're going to move them over to the selected window using the single right hand arrow. To complete this process, we're going to click the OK button and then RAM connection is going to attempt to assign a connection to each of the currently selected joints using one of the connection templates that we chose through this process. Now within the RAM connection validation report, we're going to scroll down in our window to see the status of each of the assigned connections. A few things you're going to want to look for through this dialog. You're going to want to see if there were any currently selected joints that did not receive a connection design. Here I can see that I have four joints that did not receive a connection because the selected connection templates were not compatible with the joints that I had selected. The reason they weren't compatible with those particular joints is because those joints have HSS rectangular tubes for their column sections and a double angle bolted connection would not be compatible with this type of joint. Now as I scroll down further we can see that those are the only joints that did not receive a connection design and for all of the other joints they did receive a connection and their status is indicated here. Now I can see all of the joints that were assigned a connection have passed the code check because they're giving me a status of okay. 
In addition to that, I'm also going to scan my RAM connection input dialog, and we're going to notice that the interaction ratio is indicated for each of the joints that were assigned a connection in the model. And the ratio field is in green, indicating that these connections pass the code check without producing any warnings. In addition to that, let's go ahead and take a look at the templates that were selected for each. Now, RAM connection does use a certain nomenclature for their connection templates that we're going to be able to see through our RAM connection input dialog. Let's take a look at the first connection for example. Here, the connection template is a DA, which means double angle connection. Next, it's telling me that it's a BCF, which indicates it's a beam column flange connection. Next, we have the connection angle sizes. Here, I have an L3 by 3 by 1 half. And then the bolts are indicated. Uh, for this particular connection, I have two 3 quarter inch diameter bolts. Now, if I wanted more information on this particular connection, I can double click on it within the RAM connection input dialog, which will allow me see, to see the rest of the information. I can see a three-dimensional view of the connection. I can also view a DXF view, and I can take a look at the other pieces that define this connection. In addition to that, I also have a results report available for each of the connections within my model. Here, all of the geometric considerations will be reported and the design checks. Now, if you desire some additional information through your connection report, you can click on the Show Formulas icon and the calculations for the connections will be indicated directly in the report. Now in some upcoming exercises, we will be showing you a more in-depth view of the connection pad where you can edit the connections if they did produce warnings or errors. For this exercise, we can see everything past the code check, so we'll go ahead and exit out of the connection pad. Now through the RAM validation dialog, we did notice that there were four joints within our model that did not receive a connection design. And the reason for that is because their connection, their joint geometry was not compatible with the connection template we selected. So let's go ahead and address those particular joints. Now my three HSS columns are located in the back of the structure. And I'm gonna go ahead and design a connection for these end columns first. Now to manually select these joints, I'm just going to hold down my control key and select the beam that is framing into those columns as well as the columns themselves. Now for this particular exercise, let's go ahead and assign a smart connection. I'm going to go back up to the connection design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on my smart connection option. Now a smart connection is a connection in which all of the connection pieces, such as the weld size, the number of bolts, the size of bolts, those types of pieces of information can be selected by the program. Okay, so let's go ahead and select a smart connection template that would be compatible with an HSS rectangular column shape. In the smart connection dialog, I'm going to select a unstiffened seated beam column flange connection, and I am going to select the welded option. I'm going to move this connection template over to the selected area, and then we'll go ahead and click OK. I can see that two connections have been assigned, and their status is each indicated as OK. If I scroll down in my RAM connection input dialog, I can see that connections have been assigned to those particular joints.
Now to finish off this exercise, we're also going to assign some connections to the center column and the two beams framing into them. Now for this particular exercise, I'm going to assume that this is a continuous beam that is running over the top of the column. So to assign a column cap connection, I'm going to go up to my basic connection icon and select the column cap plate connection. Here I'm going to select all of my connection templates that I want to use as a candidate. Move them over to the selected window and then again we'll finish this off by clicking OK. Now connection has been assigned to that joint so we'll go ahead and click close and if you wanted to take a look at that connection you can just double click on it in the RAM connection dialog. Now at this point, all of our beam column flange connections that are resisting our shear reactions have been assigned in the model and all of them are passing the code check. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.